today I'd like to talk about um, using switches to do uh, circuit analysis and a typical introduction to electric circuits class. So here's a classic problem where you need the students need to figure out what the initial conditions are when the switch is closed and then what the uh, transient response is when you open the switch. Of course, the, the trick, you know, for the students is that when the switch is closed, it doesn't go to 20 volts, right? It goes to the voltage division of the 3 and the 9 ohm. The 1 ohm doesn't come into account because when this is fully charged, it acts like an open circuit, no current flows. So that's like the, the you know, some of the things that a professor would be trying to test the students on. Also, the rise and the fall time have different um, tau's. All right, the rise, um, the three ohm in parallel with the nine in series with the one times RC, and then the fall is just the sum of these two <coughs> times that, times the capacitance. So, of course, I love to verify my work in LT Spice before I make an exam or grade homework. Um, and you have the, the switch element, right? What I like to do when I use LT Spice is have everything calculated and nothing done by hand. That way I can change numbers easily and um, not make a typo in one of my solutions, which is pretty embarrassing. So we have a switch and a few things about the switch is that this switch instance, right, if we just right click on it, right, it's called my switch, right? So it doesn't have a model built in. You have to add one after the fact. And so this would be dot model, my switch matches my switch. SW is the switch model, like NMOS, PMOS, diode, and you have various parameters. Right, what is the resistance when the switch is closed? One nano. When it's off, one meg. The switching threshold, I put 0.5. There's a hysteresis, I'm not using that. A series inductance and a V series. I, this is just very idealized. And then I have a pulse over here that will turn that switch off and on, and I programmed it. I go, you know, zero to one, rise and fall, so much shorter than any tell that it won't affect the circuit but then I program something called five tau rise and the period so that it will only stay on for the correct amount of time just some things that when you add these right it's edit spice directive and that when you if I'm doing something dots you know something it's control M makes a line. If I just press enter, it it dies. So that's a, you know, it's buried in the documentation. And so I have all these parameter statements, and if I right click here, I can edit each one individually. If I press cancel, then I have the whole thing. And so um, yeah, it's a little hard to, to see, and we'll just zoom in. So dot parameter means set something to something. So dot parameter R1, 3. Parameter R2, 9. Parameter R3, 1. And 20 milli for C1. And then when I want to use it, you know, here's my resistance. I put it in curly brackets. And whatever R1 is here, it comes there. And I can show you, even in the sum equations later, you can use that. So then I calculate what uh, V high should be, which is our, you know, the voltage division of R1 and R2. Then I calculate the fall, t the tau of T fall. If that switch is open, all the charge has to discharge through R1 and R2 in series. T rise is a little, uh, not quite as intuitive, um, but you have actually R1 and R2 in parallel in series with R3. From an impedance perspective, right, an ideal voltage source has no impedance. 
So if you were to redraw it with the switch closed and this set to zero, you would it would be a lot easier to see. And that one, and it was LT Spice that showed me the error of my thinking when I fir first uh, did that kind of problem. So I just calculate it out, and then I only want the pulse widths to be five tau on and five tau off. And so five tau rise, I just multiply it by five, I get the five tau. And then in the period, I just sum it. And then I put in two nano to take into account the fact that, let me zoom out. Let me zoom out. Is that in my voltage source, right? Zero to one, one nano rise and fall. T on is the five tau to rise, and then the period is uh, set to the to the sum of the two five tau's because they are in fact not the same, as we'll find out. Um, then something I just thought to add is I like to check my work with a behavior voltage source, and you just again when working with students a common thing is is you you need to add they need to add a BV right so when you stomp it down it has the word B sometimes what folks will do is they'll add the voltage source then come up here and type in B3 that doesn't make it a behavior voltage source, and you get some weird errors when that happens. All right. So um, sometimes this is a lot of code, right? And uh, I'll I'll edit it somewhere else and then cut and paste it. But um, you can see that you know you have the step response. Um, you don't use T, you use time. Um, and yeah, I did, I thought one needed the curly brackets every time you used a variable, but even right here, I forgot to do it and it still worked. So probably need to go back to the documentation. So that's the rise and then the fall, I just subtract it by the delay time and I even put a step function on it um, and so it works. Now this did not happen this did not work, um, shall we say, the first time. Uh, just one last thing. I'm not quite sure why I was doing it, but I was calling my variable letter fi uh, number five underscore such and such, and it wasn't calculating. It just substituted five for everything, and it took me an hour to track that down. It probably in a document somewhere, but. I don't know, maybe I didn't sleep well last night. Anyway, as you can see, it matches pretty well. Um, it is a numerical matching, so there's slight variances. But you can see that it goes up to, you know, 5 tau. It gets to about 15. Of course, it doesn't get exactly to 15 in 5 tau. That's why it's a little bit off. And then we discharge there. Um, so, yeah, now let's see. I want, you know, I'm creating a problem set. All right, I change R3 to 10. Everything changes, but the simulation matches the check. It just really saves a lot of time. Um, anyway, I should probably put a link to this in the description. <laughs> but I hope you find this uh, helpful. Um, have fun with it.